Plan Operations and the Environmental Health and Risk Management Department would like to welcome you to the Indoor Air Quality in Mold course. The technical contact is Emmett Sullivan, the Environmental Protection Manager. These are the major points that will be covered in today's presentation. Indoor Air Quality IAQ basics, common IAQ complaints, desired IAQ conditions, mold, plan operations IAQ team, reporting IAQ concerns, concluding with a summary of the major highlights. Here is a basic definition of IAQ. Note there are measurable factors such as temperature, humidity, and the potential presence of air contaminants, but more importantly is the building's occupant's sense of the IAQ conditions in his or her particular area. Everybody is different and people have different degrees of reaction to the presence of these factors. The goal of the successful IAQ program is to reduce IAQ concerns. You may ask why IAQ is such a big deal, and the answer is simple. Americans spend more time indoors. In today's modern buildings, many windows don't open, reducing outside ventilation. This can increase the concentration of potential contaminants. Depending on what contaminants are present, this could lead to adverse health effects. Here are some of the more common sources of IAQ problems. Um, it is estimated that almost 50% of IAQ problems can be traced back to the HVAC system. The proper maintenance of this system is crucial to favorable IAQ conditions in a building. Some of the other common contributors to IAQ problems are building materials and furnishings, storage of cleaning supplies, pesticides, and other aromatic products, equipment such as copiers, fume hoods, and stoves. Here is a list of some of the common pollutants and likely sources that trigger IAQ complaints. Mold would fit under the biological agent category and will be discussed later in this course. These are some of the common effects. Again, people react differently and some unfortunately can be dramatically influenced by a contaminant while others in the same area experience little or no discomfort. From a building manager's perspective, here are some conditions you would like to see carbon dioxide level um, is an indication of how much fresh air ventilation is coming into the area. The most important consideration to a building manager is the last one listed, no occupant complaints. Mold is a hot topic in the IAQ field today. Mold and mildew are fungi that produce spores which are continually floating throughout the environment. Mold can take nutrients from wood, paper, and countless other materials. How does mold affect our health? Most of the time we're talking about allergic reactions such as sneezing and coughing probably have heard of toxic mold, but the evidence that mold has caused death by itself is highly debatable. Where is mold found? A better question would be, where is mold not found?
mold is ubiquitous in the environment. Some people estimate that 25% of the biomass of the Earth is composed of mold and fungi. The Houston Chronicle gives the mold spore counts daily in its website. Think about these spores just floating through space, ready to land on some source and eat it. Mold has been around forever, and just recently people have become aware of it. So mold is everywhere. What can we do about it? The single biggest factor in retarding mold growth is to control moisture inside a building. Some sources of moisture include water from roof leaks, broken pipes, high humidity, and penetrating from the ground. Plant Operations has a IAQ team with members from different departments. The IAQ team meets regularly and pools its information about IAQ complaints, construction projects, and tries to solve reoccurring IAQ concerns. Our goal is simple, keeping the building occupants comfortable by addressing IAQ concerns. Plant Operations has a specific strategy for controlling mold, which is shown here. This is the Plant Operations Carpenter Shop. You can see some new sheetrock, which could be used to replace a mold-infested area. The Texas Department of State Health Services has passed some rules concerning mold in public buildings. Basically, visible mold on surfaces larger than 25 contiguous square feet must have a licensed mold abatement company to perform a remediation. This is from a mold remediation project which took place in Science and Research 2. Now this is where you come in. Please promptly report IAQ concerns or complaints to the Plan Operations Customer Service Center. This is the nerve center for Plan Operations and allows us in Plan Operations to communicate back and forth. In summary, IAQ conditions affect us all at the university. Plan Operations has an IAQ team that strives to address the building occupants' IAQ concerns. Mold spores are everywhere in the environment, and the key to controlling mold growth inside the buildings is to control moisture levels in the buildings. You as a building occupant can help us by promptly reporting IAQ concerns to the Customer Service Center. There is a lot of information out there concerning IAQ. Two good places to start are the EPA and the OSHA websites. Thank you for your attention.